the regular meeting of uh, the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. It is Wednesday, January 12th. We had an election yesterday in town, and I would ask the town clerk to uh, go down front and swear in our newly elected town council member, please. Welcome, Councillor McKenney. You have a large pile of information in front of you. <laughs> you have 30 seconds to get up to speed on everything <laughs> in that packet. Um, would the town clerk please call the roll? Chairman Swift Kayata? Here. Councillor Backer? Here. Councillor Fritz? Here. Councillor Lynch? Here. Councillor McKenney? Here. Councillor Moles? Here. Councillor Roberts? Present. And the town manager? I'm here. And the town clerk? Here. Okay, thank you. Uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Reports and correspondence. Is there any counselor who would like to report on anything? Councillor Roberts. Well, I only have one, and it's, I guess it's a good well wish uh, to one of our police officers. I just learned this week that Alan Westbury had to have major heart surgery, and he's out recuperating. And if Alan, you're know, watching, uh, get well soon and hurry, hurry back. Thank you. I'm sure we, we send all our be best wishes to the officer. Anyone else? Okay. Town manager's report. Yeah, before I gave my report, I'd like to yield to the clerk to speak for a moment about dog licenses. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, just a reminder that the annual dog licenses were due December 31st. Uh, there is a grace period, mm -hmm. and starting February 1st, unfortunately, there is a state statute that requires a $15 late fee per dog. Um, so I'd encourage you to please come in, um, bring a current rabies uh, certificate if the dog has been neutered or spayed. We would need to have that if it's not on file. And my final plea would be if you no longer have your dogs, if you would please call us and notify us so that we can take them off from the files. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Manager? Yeah, uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. I, I always hate Mr. Manager whenever okay, I hear that. Okay, Mr. McGovern. <laughs> Mike. Mike. That's fine. Thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I was thinking today, I was asked to, uh, Deborah Lane, out back there somewhere, uh, asked me about three weeks ago to write an article for the Chamber of Commerce newsletter, and uh, she told me about two days ago that it was due today, and she told me this afternoon that it was, by the way, with that <laughs> article. And, uh, I, I wrote a brief article, finally, about a half hour before the deadline, but in it, you know, it, it was looking at, uh, you know, it was one of those, uh, I looked at it as one of those end of year things, uh, or beginning of year things, but it struck me that, you know, to a business audience like a Chamber of Commerce, that we ought to look at, you know, the, the town tables but as a business. And looking at it, you know, believe it or not, this past year, including all the school department, all our different entities, we had, and the article says it, I'm not going to read it because I don't want to scoop the Chamber newsletter, but... Uh, we had over $17 million in payroll this, this past year. Uh, we issued 960 W-2 forms to, to various uh, employees, election workers, 
uh, coaches, everything else. Uh, 17,296 payroll checks. Uh, we, we purchased another amount of goods and services and paid principal and interest of over $14 million. Uh, the assets included a, a gift shop, a museum, a fitness center, a wedding chapel, over $50 million in, in building value, hundreds of acres of land. And, you know, when I look at the, the varied services, and it struck me, though, you know, we're, we're, we have all the same issues that other businesses have of uh, problems with that consumers will only pay so much for certain products. Uh, you know, Walmart has become the common denominator, and it, it's no different than municipalities. And, you know, and it really is, it, it doesn't say it in the article, but as I reflect on the past year of everything we went through with the Carol Pileski Task Force, I think, uh, uh, Carol Pileski Tax Cap Initiative, I think what was n most notable this past year was the fact that a group of citizens came forward in Cape Elizabeth who, who fought that tax cap, who pointed out to the citizens that it was not a good public policy for this community. In the end, 70% of citizens felt, and the tax cap actually didn't take a position, but they pointed out its impacts. 70% of the citizens felt that it, w that it was not a good thing. And you know, when, when I reflect of, of that and the important <coughs> work of that citizens, and I also reflect on all of our municipal staff, uh, there are a number of them still in this room this evening, at least three looking quickly around, whose, whose jobs were on the, uh, on the block all, almost all of last year, at least for the first 11 months, if not before. And they all continued to do professional work. All the employees came through. You know, and I, I looked today, I went to over to Scarborough at one point this afternoon, and I went out onto our roads, and they were absolutely beautiful in terms of, at that point, they were black. And, you know, I really am proud of everyone who volunteered the services for the town, as well as all the employees for this past year. When I finished the, the chamber thing, uh, Local government is not too dissimilar from your business. Consumers will only pay so much, and there is a constant need to control cost. Thank goodness all of our local governments have volunteers ready to serve in so many, many, in so many ways, and elected officials who, despite all the bricks thrown their way, still try to make all of our communities better places. And I think that's, you know, really, if I could sum up anything in Cape Elizabeth, it is by working together and, and finding common ground that so much gets done. So we have a lot of challenges ahead in 2005. Uh, most of all, I think these new spending caps that the legislature is, is looking at that again will, you know, be in, in some ways a substitute for Pulaski and uh, going to make things very challenging. Look forward to working with you, Madam Chairman, and uh, the rest of the council. Please on those call issues. me Ann. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. Um, and I would like to man, uh, mention, I forgot to report during reports and correspondence that I attended a very nice luncheon put on by the Fort Williams Advisory um, Commission. Uh, was that just yesterday? yesterday? Yesterday. Out at Portland Headlight, and it was to honor Al Barthelman for his six years of service on the Fort Williams Advisory Commission and his two years of um, chair of that commission. Al has done uh, a lot of heavy lifting, and you can look around that fort and see the results of what he has been working on, along with many other people. Uh, over the last six years, a new master plan, a new playground, landscaping around Portland Headlight, the Cliff Walk, and there are numerous other projects, but I just wanted to mention publicly how grateful um, the council is and how grateful the citizens should be for the work that Al and all the other members of the commission um, do for, uh, for us. So I'm sorry I forgot that before. Um, now we're at the point where we have a period of time for citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. If there is anyone here who would like to come forward and speak about something that is not on the agenda, please come forward to the podium, state your name, and... Um, yes, um, no. good evening, um, Madam Chairman, Michael, members of the Town Council. I'm Phyllis Cogsall. I live at 336 Ocean House Road in Cape Elizabeth, and I'm also the president of the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust. I'm here to speak on the item that's not on the agenda that was tabled in September, which was um, making a contributions to the land trust for the Jordan Farm project from the remaining proceeds of the sale of the lot next door, which I believe closed December 16th. 
The Cape Elizabeth Land Trust is celebrating its 20th anniversary this year. Um, 20 years of preserving land, and of the 500 acres that we have preserved, they are protected for the enjoyment of everyone, all of you, your children, forever. Our work is an investment in the future of Cape Elizabeth and a commitment to the quality of life that we all enjoy. The town and Cape Elizabeth Land Trust, which I'll refer to as CELT from now on, it's too long, have a long-standing partnership in such pro projects as Hobstone Trail, the Great Pond Trail, and Robinson Woods, with the town contributing 25 to 50 percent of the cost. The Jordan Farm project involves the top piece of land um, for conservation and protection in the comprehensive plan. The land is significant because of its scenic beauty and historical value as one of the last working farms in Cape Elizabeth. CELT needed to raise $170,000 towards the purchase uh, of <clears throat> the development rights before any monies would be released by the um, granting agency. We approached the town administration about partnering with us again and were encouraged to make a request for $100,000. The Finance Committee in November 2003 made a recommendation to the council that CELT be given $70,000 from the proceeds following the sale of the lot next door. This was with a 4-3 vote. To this day, the town council has not acted upon this recommendation, nor is it on tonight's agenda, where you are considering the distribution of that money. In order for us to obtain any grants from the Land Remains Future Board, and especially the federal government, it is critical that we have a strong partnership with you. Trusting our past relationship with you, we were given a grant for $1,130,000. This is a first for the federal government ever <clears throat> to partner directly with a local land trust. This was an extraordinary opportunity for all of us, the citizens of Cape Elizabeth. We cannot bring money to our projects and to the town without a strong relationship with you and your continued commitment to the comprehensive plan recommendations of land preservation and your financial assistance. So we ask you to order your to honor your commitment. Please bring forth a recommendation to grant seventy thousand dollars for the Jordan Farm project tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, minutes of the meeting. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on any other item that is not on the agenda? Seeing none, um, we will move on. The minutes of the meeting uh, held December 13th. Do I hear a motion? I, I move approval of the minutes of the meeting of December 13th, 2004. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion or corrections? All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. The manager has reminded me that I have not yet on camera welcomed Paul McKinney. <laughs> I'm sorry, I welcomed you before the cameras went on. So welcome, Councillor McKinney. Congratulations on your race and congratulations on your win and we are happy to have you serving with us. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here, and it's an honor to serve with each and every one of you. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on. Item number 85, which has to do with a liquor license for the Inn by the Sea. Is there anyone? Yes. Yes. Would you like to come forward? Well, we can have a motion. Um, I would move um, approval of the annual um, liquor license for um, the legal entities operating the Inn by the Sea as, have, as appearing in our package. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, um, unless you feel a burning need to come to the podium and say something. Then all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Congratulations. We appreciate all the good 
uh, work and the uh, contributions the Inn by the Sea makes to the town. Thank you very much. <coughs> Next item is item number 86. First, we will be having a public hearing on this. It is um, a public hearing on proposed amendments to the zoning ordinance regarding the BB district and an amendment to the zoning map. Uh, the amendments include rezoning the gravel pit on Fowler Road from the RA district to the BB district and expanding the BB district to make earthwork activities a permitted use. So. Um, if there's anyone here who would like to speak at the public hearing, would they please come forward to the podium, state their name and address, and please try to keep your remarks brief. We have a lot of things to go through tonight, but we would like to hear from anyone who wants to speak. I'll, I'm declaring the public hearing open. Come forward, please. Good evening. <laughs> Paul Woods, I stand in support of rezoning TV to expanded use, including earthwork and uh, whatever the expanded definition uh, entails. I support it for two reasons. Um, first reason, of course, is that um, um, as a town changes uh, the process, I respect the process in terms of, re of rezoning and people thoughtfully um, going about the um, going about the process. And I'm sure the staff and the planning <coughs> office worked very difficult uh, difficult aspects of this and tried to harmonize it in the best possible way. And it does look like a good use. And also, I'd like to say a kind word about the Murrays themselves. Um, I think that um, keeping a variety of different businesses in the town of Cape Elizabeth, sometimes even not the completely groovy businesses and the completely um, white-collar businesses, I think it's very important for overall balance in terms of what this town represents and in terms of what the variety of services the town can provide, not only for itself, but for surrounding communities. Um, I stand in support of it. I think it's a good move for town. I think it also helps the town center district. And it is a, um, a, a good example of the process working very nicely in terms of how this thing moves forward from idea and concept to actual uh, statute and legislation. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this matter before I move to Councillor Roberts? Seeing no one else, I declare the public hearing closed. Councillor Roberts is chair of the ordinance committee. Would you like to say a few words about this and you perhaps make a, make a motion? I motion first. I think I'll do the motion first. Either way. Um, I, I would move for passage of uh, item 860405, uh, amendments to the BB district of the zoning ordinance and BB district amendment to the zoning map. Second. second. <laughs> it's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Councilor Roberts. Sure. At the uh, November 18th meeting, the Ordinance Committee voted to recommend to the Town Council the attached amendments to the BB District of the Zoning Ordinance and the BB District Amendment to the Zoning Map. The amendments include rezoning the gravel pit from the RA District to the BB District and expanding the BD District to make earthwork operations a permitted use. Three definitions have been added to the Zoning Ordinance. The purpose of the statement for the BB District has been replaced. Earthwork has been added as a permitted use and minimum lot size and setbacks have been created. The zoning map will also be amended to create a new BB district adjacent to the town center <coughs> off all the road. It is our belief that this offers both the business and the adjoining residences more protection than currently exists. Thank you very much. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. I also would like to um, thank the Murrays for all the good work that they do for the town and uh, hope they continue to do well in their business since we use it so much. Thank you. Um, item number 87 also involves a, a proposed amendment to a zoning, zoning ordinance and we'll, we will have a public hearing first. It is um, it, the topic is proposed amendments to the zoning ordinance which would define the term multifamily and add multifamily as a permitted use in the BA district. If there's anyone who would like to, I declare the public hearing open. If there's anyone who would like to come forward and speak on this matter, please come to the podium and state your name and address. Yes, 
Sir. Good evening. Joel Fitzpatrick, Fitzpatrick Associates, uh, based here in Cape Elizabeth. Um, I'm just up to support the, to show my support for the amendment. Um, after studying the ordinance, uh, I believe that it was the intent of the people who wrote them that the multifamily be an uh, uh, accepted use in the VA zone. So I just want to show my support. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Fitzpatrick. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Yes, ma'am. I'm Mary Page. I own uh, Two Lights General Store at 517 Ocean House. Excuse me, could you just push the microphone down a little? I'm, maybe it's just me, but I'm having a Better. little more directly to you. Yeah. Better. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, I want to say that I'm in favor of this amendment. It uh, will help small businesses in certain areas and the zoning change. And, and I'm for this well, so. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to speak at the public hearing? Seeing no one, I declare the public hearing closed. Uh, no. Councillor Roberts? I would move the passage of uh, item 870405, which will add multifamily to the definitions section of the zoning ordinance and explicitly adds multifamily as a permitted use in the BA district. Is there a second? So a second, okay. I mean. <laughs> so seconded. <laughs> it's been moved and seconded. seconded. Is there discussion? Councillor Roberts. I don't think I need to add much more than you did in your preface. Um, okay. This was an item that was clearly uh, intended to be in the ordinance originally and was one of those things that gets left out or forgotten in the, as you rework ordinances occasionally. And this puts it where everybody believed it should have been in the first place. Thank you. Any other comments or discussion? Councillor Knowles. Yes. Are there any set number to the units spelled out or just the building size spelled out? Would our town planner like to come forward and address that question, please? Maureen O'Meara. So is your question the total? Yeah, value? obviously a multifamily is two or more units, mm -hmm. but does it cap out at a certain number, whether it be four, five, six, or is it just the building size yes, is capped? There's, there's a definition that, um, Usually, and if you'll give me a moment, um, there's a density maximum that's allowed in the business aid district. I believe it's one unit per 50,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. I want to double check that. So that would be your cap. So it's only limited by the size of land they have available. They can just fill it up as much as the land is there, which we know there isn't much of. There isn't no. much of available yeah, we land. Had a, we have a definition for multiplex which actually capped the number of units at four. And we kept running into problems with that, um, where we found places where it made sense to allow more units and, and you couldn't because of this arbitrary number that was in the ordinance. So when we drafted multifamily as a definition, we didn't put a maximum number of units that you could have in the building. And multifamily is explicitly permitted in the BA and the town center district. And in those districts, the number of units is regulated by the size of the, of the the lot. In addition, in the uh, town center district, whenever you build a building, no more than one half of it can be constructed as residential. Having been involved with the planning process for the <coughs> future of the lot on the north side of the town hall, uh, does that 15,000 square foot match with the proposed plans for next door? Will that fit okay? In the, vis in the town center district, we have a 7,500 square foot ma number per unit. Okay. And the project next door actually has enough land for four units. So it, it, this won't affect that because okay. multifamily is already explicitly permitted in the, in the town center district. Thank you very much. Other questions or discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. O'Meara, for your work on this, and I'd like to thank the Ordinance Committee for their work on these last two matters also. Um, item number 88, General Assistance Ordinance. Do I hear a motion? Oh, I'm sorry, public hearing. Oh, I am losing it today. A public hearing will occur. 
Is there anyone here? I declare the public hearing open. This has to do with the annual updates to the general assistance ordinance as required by the Maine Department of Human Services. Anybody here who would like to speak on that? Please come forward. Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Now do I hear a motion? The motion, w I um, think, would be I'll to approve the appendices. Well, that's, I was going to move. Yes. Adoption of the new overall maximums for general assistance as set out in the document attached to our agenda no, um, cited as item 88. And there are a number of maximums in that document, and presumably you've all read them. Thank you, Councilor Lynch. Is there a second? Second. And moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Item number 89 uh, has to do with a grant application. Um, for, to the Maine Bureau of Parks and Lands. Mike, would you like to say yeah, something Ms. Like O'Meara has worked with, the, particularly with the Conservation Commission, on implementing the Gullcrest Master Plan. Mm -hmm. uh, and at this point in time, there's, there's a program available through the Maine Department of Conservation, uh, Division of Grants and Community Recreation, uh, for trail work. And Ms. O'Meara has done an excellent job putting together this grant application. and. Uh, we applied for the maximum amount. Uh, the application was, in fact, sent in December 3rd. Uh, the, they understood that at that point we didn't have council authorization. Uh, the, I actually got the material after the, the council agenda had the deadline had passed for the December meeting. So it is on your agenda. We'd, we'd hope you'd authorize the, the application, and then we'll send a letter to the state indicating that that's occurred, and, and then we'll be in, uh, in order for them to reconsider. But again, I'd like to thank uh, Maureen for all her efforts on this. Uh, the Conservation Commission also take the opportunity to note that the Public Works Department and the Conservation Commission, and we were talking about the Murrays contributing, uh, Steve Murray and uh, Skip Murray and the, the, the various firms have been working on a new bridge across the uh, Spurwick River and Public Works is, was setting a lot of folks down there in the cold in the muck and I don't know what the number is up to now, but uh, we now have a bridge across the marsh that's still under construction, not yet passable, but uh, because someone, someone actually has passed over it, but I wouldn't recommend it on tonight's ice. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's great to see that moving along, and this will continue to help it move along as well. Thank you very much. Move I'd like to move authorization of the application to the Maine Bureau of Parks and Lands for the grant. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. And I would also like to echo the thanks to our town planner and to Public Works for their hard work on this. Yeah. There's also a carpenter there who's working hard. I don't remember. I didn't mean to leave him out. What's his name? Ken Sear. Ken Sear from the town of Scarborough. Who, uh, is he, I don't know if he's from Scarborough, but he's done a lot of work with Scarborough Trails. We appreciate his efforts as well. Thank you. Okay. Item number 90, which... It has to do with grant allocation. Mr. McGovern, would you like to say something about this? Yeah, back in uh, August, uh, I gave the council a memo. You didn't form, I think you did discuss it at a workshop. You <coughs> discussed it at a workshop, you discussed it at a workshop uh, looking at different options for the use of the 2004 Homeland Security Grants and Law Enforcement Grants. This is something that the governor strongly recommended we work with schools on this year to look at the possibilities and that we also look at doing things regionally uh, we're coming forward with uh, a handful of maybe six suggestions. One is a new generator for the high school. The high school currently does not have a generator uh, for operating it just now with the, the construction work going down there. We're finding that when the, li when the high school goes down, the library goes down, uh, the, all the assessing records online go down because they're, they're all controlled out of the server at the high school. Uh, so uh, it, that's a, a quite a bit of concern for all the various reasons. Uh, and this is for a used generator, $55,000. Uh, a mobile electronic message board sign. Uh, this is, is a sign that would indicate when certain roads are going to be closed, evacuation routes, 
all those different things, but it also has a lot of day-to-day -day utility of reminding folks of occasionally of speed limits, of, uh, of uh, upcoming uh, cleanup weeks and uh, hazardous material collection weeks and all those sorts of things. That's $18,000. Uh, something called the voter uh, for fire and rescue communication, but this is, it amplifies the signal. And right now, the fire and rescue at times can have difficulty at Fort Williams Park uh, with the radio communications, this voter uh, boosts the signal for all the different activities down there. Uh, they, we put one on the family crisis shelter roof last year for the uh, police, and that's, as I understand, worked exceedingly well, so the police can now talk back to the station and to each other, and this would accomplish the same thing for the fire and rescue. Uh, there'd be a lighting unit that would be mounted on a fire truck that would light any fire scene. This is one of those big things when you go to a fire and you see it's all brightly lit so you can see the front of the building so that the, uh, the uh, call personnel who attend there can see their way around and so that particularly as the power is extinguished in the, the burning structure and thereafter, these lights also project into the structure uh, to help them uh, see around. This is a $12,000 unit. It could also be used at the port for special events when events get over and you need to project light onto a hill, for instance, so that everyone doesn't trip and end up in the rescue. Uh, uh, that's 12000 A key loader is, is some technical thing. It's $2,000. I'm not going to try to explain it. <laughs> Chief Williams is here if you really want to know. And then finally, we, we work with South Portland, and we work with anyone else in the tactical team? No, with South Portland, uh, we have a couple of uh, police officers who are, who are part of a tactical response team. And our guys are really good, but they don't have anything to wear. Uh, when they respond, uh, that, that uh, they have clothing, but they don't have the, the uh, tactical equipment. It's comforting and to know. This, 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 stuff it was. Is, this stuff is rather expensive, and uh, it adds up to about eight thousand dollars for you know the, the, the clothing and the various gears in order to do this. And this is not something we'd ever do alone in Cape Elizabeth. There'd really be no justification for it. But you know, there's so many of these things we do regionally and. And this is one of it, and th there's a small contribution to South Portland, I believe, in here as well for some minor radios or equipment or something related to this. But it adds up to 8,000. So that's, that's the list, Madam Chairman. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, do I hear a motion? I'll move that we authorize the town manager to submit <coughs> the proposed plan uh, for a grant to the main emergency management agency. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Council Roberts? I just have a question on the $55,000 for the generator unit, having been involved in a couple of those. The transfer of switch, the electrician, the generator, that seems awfully low, even for a second-hand one. And how much of the high school will that really uh, cover? And just a small portion of it or certain basic elements that we need to keep going, or will it actually keep the high school itself going? Madam Chairman, I'd like the facilities manager has has worked with an engine, an electrical engineer, or electrician to work, look at those issues, and I'd be happy if he answered the question. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Jack, our goal is to do just those areas that would be used for um, shelter purposes, which would be the gym, the cafeteria, the kitchen, um, probably most of the first level of the uh, facility, um, and of course the heat throughout the facility. Very good. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Uh, a question Lynch. for the town manager, and I think it's along the same lines as Jack's question, and it's just simply, um, will the, um, any of these items require the expenditure of local funds beyond some incidental work? Uh, no. The, the, you know, they don't immediately, but, you know, obviously generators occasionally require maintenance, they require gasoline. Uh, the, the message board, you know, will have maintenance requirements at different times, replacement of, of different parts. Uh, the voter won't be a problem. Uh, the lighting unit, you know, once you get one of those, at some point there'll be a desire for replacement, but uh, uh, there's really no expense for that in bulb, I suppose. The key loader, I won't even try to, uh, I don't know. Uh, and, and, some, and obviously this tactical team, you know, once you outfit them, They'll occasionally, you know, a lot of these best in things under the, some of the technical codes that are required, they need replacement, uh, you know, in certain years period. It's not like some things where you simply, you know, they, they wear out like bulletproof vests are only licensed for so many years, five years, and you need to replace them. And some of this gear, you know, could in fact, uh, you know, also have <coughs> similar expirations that 
for liability and safety reasons you need to attend to. So th there is some implication, uh, but nothing extraordinary. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? No? Okay. Um, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. And thank you, Ernie, for your comments. Okay. This brings us to item number 910405, which has to do with the disposition of funds from the long-awaited sale of the lot next to Town Hall. That was originally expected. It was originally expected that it would close in early to mid-summer of last year. I would like to suggest a procedural motion um, to table number 91 just to the end of tonight's meeting after item number 95. It should only be a few minutes, but I'd like to get through 92, 3, 4, and 5, which I don't anticipate would take more than five Some minutes moved. or so. So moved. moved. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Okay. Thank you very much. So we will take this up after item number 95. <laughs> um, item number 92 has to do with vacancies. Um, Council Roberts, did you want to make a motion here? Certainly. We have a, uh, a number of vacancies that uh, now can be filled by our newest councillor. So I would like to make the following uh, recommendation. And one of them, actually, there are others that we need to extend their terms. So I'll grab them all at the same time, if you don't mind. Certainly. I would. Uh, move that uh, Councillor McKinney be appointed to the Ordinance Committee, the Greater Portland Council of Governments Executive Committee, and the Thomas Jordan Grants Committee to 12-2005, or 12-2005, excuse me, and also to extend the terms of Councillor Backer and Councillor Fritz on the Thomas Jordan Grants uh, subcommittee expire on 6-2006 uh, and 6-2007, respectively and that it's recommended that each term be extended uh, through December 31 of the respective year. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Council Roberts. Welcome to the new committees, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> you stole my line. Uh, all those in favor? It's unanimous. Now I can say welcome to the new committees also. Enjoy. Thank you. Item number 93 has to do with a quick claim deed. Uh, with, is Deborah Lane yes. here somewhere? Somewhere in the crowd. Our assistant town manager, would you please come forward and elucidate us? Thank you. Good evening, Councillors. Deborah Lane, Assistant Town Manager. In your packet, you have information, uh, which is a request for a quit claim deed to be signed for the property located at 115 Old Ocean House Road. The town on December 6th foreclosed on this property due to an unpaid sewer lien. The um, mortgage company actually has provided funds to pay all the uh, real estate taxes and sewer to date. If it is the wish of the Council to assign the quick claim deed back. It would be in order to approve the town manager to sign the quick claim deed. I do believe the applicants are here this evening if you have any questions. Okay. Do I hear a motion? Council Fritz? I just had a question on Sir? whether the, the Portland Water District bill had been paid. Today. Thank you. Yes, they have been. I talked to them and they are paid today. Thank you. Any other questions? I would like to make a motion that we authorize the town manager to sign the quick claim deed. Thank you. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Council Roberts? Yes. Um, I hate to embarrass anybody, I guess, but I do, would like to have a, an, a, an answer to a question I had in reading it over. This was not the first time that we've granted the property back through a quick claim deed. And I don't know how I tactfully say this, but is the non-payment due to a lack of an ability to pay these bills, or uh, is somebody putting their money elsewhere and getting an investment on it and getting more money than it, they would receive and holding off and having us do this? Does, does that make sense? Do you understand what I'm asking? I understand what you're asking. 
I do not know the answer to that. You may want to ask the Lonsdales who are here. Would you like Madam to Lonsdales? I do not know the financial situation um, to that degree. All right, well, I'll let the other folks answer, ask their questions first, and then we may want to get back to that. Councilor Backer. I have a question that was somewhat along the lines of um, Councilor Roberts, and that is whether the